uplift the lives one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. So you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in his atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us the word. Give us the word. Our world's in trouble, Lord. Give us the word. are in trouble. Lord, give us a word. We surrender ourselves unto you. We say all we need. Just one word. All we need. Just one word. Joining with the worship, everybody, lift your hands and say, Lord, give us the word. Come on, let's sing. Give us the word. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. know it by now. Come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Come on, just lean on them and say all we need. Just one word. This is what the Lord promised that you would. Things are getting better for you. Things are getting better for me. Somebody just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, all. One word. Just one word from you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all we need, all we need just, one just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, You promised you would. Come on, point up the heavens. A sign of victory and say, You promised you would heal my land. Somebody singing it like you really believe it. Come on, say, You promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say, All I need is just one word. Just one word. Just one word from you. Doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the lawyer says. But all I need is just one word. All I need just one word. Just one word from you. Yeah, 
Well, all right, all right, all right. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time. This is Reverend G. M. Prim. You are listening to Restored Life. Oh, what an exciting time to be um, in the land of the living. We are excited about what God is doing. We're excited about your future. We're excited about your life. We're excited just to be a world changer, and we're just glad for this platform. Tonight is a launching. It is a genesis of a new phase in our life, uh, a new phase in our ministry um, as we're launching into the world of blog talk radio and podcasting. A um, little bit nervous, um, but we're 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 believing God that this is going to be a place and a platform where lives can be changed um, and can be restored. Um, there's so many times I go throughout the week and meet so many people um, via social media or face to face, and many of them are just barely hanging on to life. Um, they, they've they been through so much, um, they're really not even living. You know, they're just merely existing. Um, and, and, and so many things have happened in their life, so many tragedies, um, and, and they're, they're overwhelmed, they're bombarded, but yet they have to get up the next day um, if God graces them to do it, um, and they they go through the day dealing with whatever they need to deal with, smile whenever they need to smile, um, laugh whenever they need to laugh, um, and sometimes they sneak away um, in their private time, and they cry when they need to cry uh, because it's just so overwhelming with what they are going through. And oftentimes they feel like they just have to hang in there and they have to just keep doing um, because so many people are dependent on them to be who they need to be, to be where they need to be, um, and, and to do what it is that they actually do in order to make somebody else happy, in order to make somebody else's life fulfilled. Um, and they themselves are not living, they're just merely existing. Well, we got good news for you. God has created this platform for us, and together we're going to build a place where you and I can come together um, weekly at 10 p.m., um, and we're going to deal with some real life issues. I mean, the things that we commonly call taboo won't be taboo here. We're going to deal with them. We're going to talk about them. We're going to deal with them head on, and we're going to deal with them from a clinical standpoint, a spiritual standpoint, and just a practical everyday life standpoint. Um, and, 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 And we're going to do it together as a family. We're going to walk this thing out, um, and, and, and we're going to hear testimonies. We're going to hear stories, um, and we're going to see people's lives be restored, um, not just breathing, but we're going to see people go back to living, um, as they say now, living their best lives. Um, we're going to stay in the race, stay in the fight, and we're going to fight for everybody that wants to fight. We're going to fight with everybody that wants to fight. It says that there is more to me than just merely existing. I have something great to do. I have exciting things to do in my life. Um, I'm not just somebody's parent. I'm not just somebody's spouse. Um, but I have something to say. Um, I, I, I have something to do. Um, I have, I, 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 I've got something important to give to society, and it's in me. What I have to give 
you can't give it, I have to give it. And what you have to give, I can't give it. And we're going to keep digging and digging and digging until we get to that place uh, to where you're confident in who you are. You're confident in who God has created you to be so that you can bring change not only to your life, but you'll be able to walk your sisters and your brothers through their life challenges so that they can come out restored, um, their life can be restored. Scripture says that Jesus came that we might have life and have that life more abundantly. Um, but there are things that we've got to do. I'm a firm believer that God is not going to come down here and do everything for us. There are some things that we have to step up to the plate. And we have to do. Um, we have to uh, make ourselves aware and be honest with ourselves that we are struggling in a particular area. That uh, we have anger issues, we have emotional distress issues, that we have um, um, an abundance of, of things that we can't talk about because we feel that if we talk about it, someone is going to be judgmental and someone is going to feel um, that you should not feel that way when the truth behind it, you feel what you feel. Um, um, you, you, you know, you, you are where you are. And so here we're not going to have judgment. Here we're literally going to hear what each other have to say and we're going to help bring change. We're going to strengthen one another and we're going to help bring um, 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 life changing principles so that you can live the life that God has created you to live. So we're launching, we're stepping out on faith. I want to personally thank my sister. Um, she is somebody special to the body of Christ. She's my my sister, and that is Miss Kimmy Robinson. We know her as Kimmy Kim. She's a producer um, for um, all the production, um, and she is um, doing an incredible job. She's given such a platform to so many voices that wouldn't normally be heard. Um, and she's simply saying, let's just do kingdom, and I want to salute her on tonight. I want to salute her and all that she does for the body of Christ. She is someone special. I'm super excited for her because she is a cancer survivor, um, breast cancer survivor. By the grace of God, we were praying. Um, the entire Elation crew all over the country uh, was praying, and God brought her through safely. Um, and she's still here. She's Ooh, still fighting. Yeah. I hear you, sis. And, and, and you know, God is amazing. He is a prayer answering God. Um, and so we are proud of you, sis, for all that you do for the body of Christ, um, not only with setting these platforms up, but Elations Radio. I mean, we have our own radio station where we are presenting new and upcoming artists um, who really have something to say. She has a heart for new and upcoming artists. And on this platform with Restored Life, we're going to be introducing, oh, my God, new artists. Um, we're going to share time with them. And you're going to get opportunity to hear their music. You're going to have an opportunity to meet them. You're going to have an opportunity to hear their music on the Lations radio station. Um, and then you also get opportunity to bring them to your city um, because we want to support our artists. They cannot do what they do. If everybody just um, just enjoys them, but somebody has to invest um, finances um, into what they're doing. And so we're going to be a major proponent, major proponent of uh, purchasing music from all of our artists. Why? Because as you purchase, you help them to be able to do what they need to do on the next level. Um, this thing is not free. It is not cheap. But we do it because we love what we do. I also want to take this time to thank my Elations family. I, I won't do this every week. So this is night one. 
we got some people calling in. I don't know if they're on yet. Some people are going to be calling in. Um, prayerfully, if not, we're going to do what we're going to do, and we're going to have a good time. But I want to take the time to thank the Elations family. Some of them I know. Some of them I'm getting to, to know. Many of them have reached out to me um, and welcomed me um, back into the family. I really didn't go anywhere. I was just working on other things. Um, but they, they reached out someone to do interviews, and we're going to be locking those in um, and, you know, and just have a great time to help build that platform also. But I want to take the time to thank every kingdom partner that's uh, part of Elation Magazine and the Elations family. It's good to be home. It's good to be with you guys. Looking forward to coming to your city um, and worshiping with you and helping to um, build the work. Um, we have work to do, and I'm glad to be a part of the team. Um, I want to thank Miss Dana Prim, which, of course, is my spouse, my, my wife, of 20 years. Yeah, yeah, 20 years, 20 years. Um, we thank God for her. She's out doing missionary work. She's actually in North Carolina right now um, looking at after her sister in love, um, she lost her brother um, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, it's a tragic accident. Um, and um, his wife at the time, she was um, eight months pregnant at the time of his demise. And since then, the new baby has been born. And so my wife and her sisters, they traveled on yesterday um, south uh, to go visit the baby and visit the sister in love and to just love on them. And so we pray that they're having a great time there in North Carolina. And I want to thank my three, our three children. They're young adults. They're grown. Now everybody's out of high school and they're working and doing what they do. Appreciate them. They are my, our heartbeats. Um, and we're so um, just elated that we have an opportunity to see them grow. All of our extended children, um, God has graced us to have some amazing young people who call us mom and dad from our local area, um, and, and they support us 1,000%. We appreciate them. We do what we do because we want to leave a legacy for our children and all of our extended children and our, prayer, you know, one day, one day, grandchildren. Um, uh, who else? I want to thank my siblings. My siblings, I have five living siblings. All of my siblings are yet alive. All of my siblings are all preachers of the gospel. Every last one of us are carriers of the word. Um, when our parents went home to be with the Lord in uh, 2012, um, they went home to be with the Lord knowing that all of their children um, are working in the kingdom and doing kingdom work. And I want to thank all of my siblings um, all four of my brothers um, and my our one and only sister, one and only sister. Um, she's in the Virginia area. We thank God for you guys, your support, your text messages, and all that type of stuff. We appreciate you. To everybody that's part of my team, thank you. Thank you. You're going to be hearing about them more and more. Um, in the near future, about our team, ministry team, um, as we're building the team again and, and, and expanding it, you're going to be hearing about them um, because they all have amazing, amazing abilities, and we're just glad to be to have them a part of our family. Um, and to all of my preach brothers and sisters around the country who've been hitting us up on social media and supporting us and pushing us and um, um, telling us that they're supporting us, thank you. It means a lot um, to know that we have people who are supportive. Now, I don't know because I'm in New York. I'm on Long Island. Um, and our production team is all the way on the other side of the country. So um, I know some people are supposed to be calling in. Um, do we have anybody on the line yet before we move further? Um, uh, is there anybody on the line just, just yet? If you are, you, this is this is your time. This is your time. Just tell us your name and where where you're calling from, um, and we would love to hear from you. 
if we have anybody on the line just yet. Well, all right, well, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to laugh. We're going to laugh. Anybody that knows me and you will get to know me, I have a sense of humor. If you are that saved that you cannot laugh, then um, you're probably not that saved. Let me just let, let me just start there. Um, if you can, if, if you're that saved that you cannot laugh, you're probably not that saved. Let me say it again for those who are halfway saved or saved on the little bus. If you are too saved to smile or laugh, um, you are not that saved. Now, because it's just not that deep. You can smile, you can laugh, you can have a good time. On this program, we're going to laugh. We're going to have a good time. We're going to crack jokes um, because I have to be who I am. I have to be who I am, and I make zero apologies. I am who I am. I'm just the way God made me, and um, I make zero, I mean zero apologies. On this program, um, let me give you some ideas that we're going to be doing. Again, we're going to be dealing with all type of issues. Um, entrepreneurs, we're going to be bringing them on. Um, we're going to be dealing with finance. Oh, my God. Uh, we're going to be dealing with marriage. Um, we're going to be dealing with intimacy in the bedroom. Now, we're not trying to get into your business, but there's so many church people, so many saints who are just bitter. They, they, they're just upset, and all of it ain't the devil. Some of it is you just, okay, so a lot of it ain't the devil. You, you just, you, you know, you, you're bound. You, you, you're you bound. Your head is about to explode, um, and you just need to be loved. Yes, you need to be loved, and if you're married, it's legal. You can love. And you can share love and intimacy. We're going to deal with all those type of things. Um, uh, I, I, I received an email and a text earlier, and people were asking about sponsorship. Yes, you can sponsor. You want to be a sponsor? You want to help us to do conferences and help us to do recordings? I am a recording artist. As a matter of fact, our opening song, opening song is our latest single. We're getting ready to record again, um, but um, it's our opening single. It's called One Word, and you actually can get it. It's downloadable on all the platforms. Um, You can stream it. You can purchase it. Um, We will hope that you would go and purchase it um, because as you purchase it, you will help us to go further in um, the things of the Lord. Um, But it's a song we wrote over 30 years ago called One Word. Um, It it has been blessing people all over the country, and we want you to have it. We want you to have it. um, Let it be in your prayer time. Let it be the song that's playing in the background um, throughout your prayer time and your study time. And I promise you, um, hearing that song, we hear testimonies all the time of how uh, that song in the background, it literally opens up the heavens, and people really begin to hear from God as a result of that song being played. Um, the anointing is on it, not just because I wrote it or I performed it or whatever you want to call it, um, but I really believe God has given us a song for this season. Um, and uh, um, you need to have that in your library. You need to have that in your library. It's called One Word, Pastor Gary M. Prim. One Word is taken from the project uh, Live in Birmingham, A Time of Refreshing. So I want you to get it and help us help us to um, do the work of the Lord. Uh, just Kim, if, whenever somebody calls in, if they call in, just let us know. We'll be glad to hear from the people. I want to um, consider something tonight, and um, uh, I, I want to start here. Um, taken from a message that I did uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, And as I was preparing and just thinking um, about this day, 
um, and what route we would go with what we would share. I thought with God, what is it that we need to deal with? And in your spare time, I want you to look at the book of Mark. Book of Mark, um, the fifth chapter, um, verses 1 through 9. And in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9, you will see um, a, a story um, of, of a man um, that had an encounter with Jesus as Jesus was entering the city. He was getting off the boat, and there he finds a man who is living in the caves and living in the graveyard. Um, the Bible declares that he was bound by chains, and um, and every time they would tie, tie him down with chains, um, no chains could hold him because he would break the chains and the fetters. Um, very interesting um, text because, um, you know, you, you have to consider the time. Um, and just stay with me. It's going to make sense where, where we're going. Because I, I, I want to deal with this topic, give you something to think about. Um, who's speaking for you? Um, when people meet you, who's speaking for you? Now, with that being the, the, with what you have in the title, let me give you some scriptural background and you see exactly where we're going. Um, the, the Bible declares that as Jesus is coming into the town, uh, this man who is um, obviously dealing with some emotional and spiritual issues, who is living in the graveyard, he is bound by chains and fetters. And the Bible says every time he would break the chains and fetters, he would be bound again, and he would break them again. The Bible declares that he was naked um, in the graveyard. Uh, I, I want you to consider something. Um, uh, um, when we read this text, um, there's some things in there that you really need to consider. Number one, when we when we read the text, we usually just deal with the man. But I want you to ask yourself, uh, number one, um, how did he get to a place to where living in the graveyard uh, where there is no life there is a memory of life. Um, there is the the image or the picture of uh, of used to be life uh, there, but there is no life there. Um, uh-huh. How did he get to a place to where he felt comfortable um, um, or felt at ease or felt peaceful um, in a place, as it were, of the dead, um, a place of used-to-be life. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, How did he get there? Uh, This is a question I want you to ask yourself. And not only how did he get there, um, but who took him there? Um, Then I I want you to ask yourself, because this is in the text, the Bible says that um, every time uh, uh, he was tied with the chains. The Bible said that no chains could hold him, which denotes and lets us know that the chains that were on him, you ready, were being broken by him. Mm. The chains that were on him were being broken by him. Uh, if you're not careful, you would read the text and ask the question or ponder, how did he get so strong? And that's a fair question. But I want you to consider the fact, um, who was putting the chains on him? Mm -hmm. Who who was, who, who was putting the chains on him? It would be one thing if the text said that that chains were put on him and he was left in the graveyard. But but the text clearly says that, that every time he would break free of the chains, um, um, he would be bound again. 
So you have to ask yourself, who, who, who one would put him uh, out of the city limits and put him into um, uh, a dead place? Um, but yet, you, are you listening and are you ready? Uh, they put him into a dead place, um, even though he was alive. And the reason why we knew he was alive, because the Bible said he kept breaking the chains. Uh, so you put him out the city into a place of death, uh, but yet you go check on him to keep him bound because you know um, that even though he's in a dead place, um, there is still life in him, um, but the life that's in him is annoying to you, and so you would rather uh, keep him. Uh, you would rather do the work um, of, of 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 keeping him bound and in a place of death uh, than dealing with whatever it was that was causing him to act in an unusual way. Uh, can I ask you um, how many of you um, at some point in time in your life have been cast aside uh, because uh, perhaps you were going through something um, and, and as it were, people uh, got, uh, you know, when it first happened to you, they were sympathetic and empathetic, um, but as time went on, your issues became a problem to them. Um, uh, basically, they wanted to know, when are you going to get your stuff together? Um, aren't you over that by now? Um, and since you're not over it by now, you're going to have to get away from me because um, I don't have time to deal with your issues and my issues. Mm-hmm. Told you we're going to deal with some stuff. We're going to deal with some stuff. Um, and I'm not trying to preach to you. I want you to give just want you to think about something. Um, 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 how, how, how many have you, under the sound of my voice, have reached a point in your life or been at a point in your life uh, to where uh, you've been so wounded and scarred by people not wanting to see better for you um, uh, because you did not get over uh, whatever you were dealing with at a rate that they thought that you should get over it at, um, they put you aside, watch this, while you were at your most vulnerable state, um, uh, when you really needed someone uh, to help get you through. Um, they, 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 they put you out uh, because your issues were too much, Um uh, and, and not only were you put out, but you were told to shut up. Because, see, the chains, um, even though it was put around his hands and his feet, um, it also could be symbolized as being put around uh, his mouth. Uh, uh, in other words, in other words, it, it's a parallel uh, picture uh, of, of, of we're going to put you out of the community, um, and we're going to lock you up over there uh, so that uh, we might not be able to shut you up, but we're going to bind you over there so that while you are screaming and crying, we don't have to hear it unless we decide to go to where you're screaming and yelling. Somebody's catching it. Um, 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 and so you find yourself, you find yourself like this man um, in a dead place with issues, um, and the ones that actually could help you decide to put you away. Um, and I don't care what you say, I don't care how safe you are, uh, when you have been wounded and scarred, uh, when you have been dealt wrong by people who should be holding you up, uh, there, is a, there is a scar that comes with that. Um, and, 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 and if you're not careful, my friend, um, uh, when people meet you, uh, they will meet what you're going through but not meet you, the person. Uh-oh. Uh, uh-huh. They'll meet what you're dealing with but not meet you, 
Uh, it, that's in the text. That's in the text because uh, in the text when we're introduced to him, um, we don't know his name besides the fact that he was a lunatic, um, <clears throat> that, that, uh, which means that we're introduced to his issue versus being introduced to the man. Uh, we don't know how he ended up out there, but we know that he's out there. Uh, we don't know the backdrop. All we know is this is where we meet him. Uh, uh, some of us, some of us, under the sound, uh, I don't want to preach this, but some of us on here have had to fight through um, 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 the image that, that some people made of you from when they first met you. Mm -hmm. Because either you introduced yourself based on your issue or someone else introduced you to them based on your issue and not you the person. And so when you meet someone, you're actually coming in from a place of defense because you automatically see it as they're going to judge me because of what I have gone through or because of what I'm going through or because of what I'm dealing with. Um, and and after so long, you develop such a, such a defense mechanism, um, such a defense that that defense mechanism actually takes on a personality, um, and that personality takes on a life, and that thing starts to live on you. I didn't say live in you, it lives on you. Um and 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 if you're not careful, uh uh that thing will literally speak for you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You as the individual won't be speaking sometimes. Uh that hurt will be speaking. Um that unresolved relationship will be talking. Um, um, when, uh, 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 when, when someone says something um, that 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 kind of pricks that thing in you, that thing in you, um, and you start to react by uh, uh, by going off. Uh, yeah, you you know you start to react by going off, um, 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 and 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 then after you got over it for a minute, and people start to act kind of uh, uh, indifferent towards you, you start to wonder why are people reacted to me like this, um, and the truth behind it, they're only reacting to what you gave them, um, uh, because you never got freed uh from that pain um, uh, you were just pushed out um, and bound you were pushed out from a uh, conversation with other people uh and you were forced to go to a dead place uh well, who would you want to talk to in a dead place um interaction helps keep you from going insane. Um, and so if you're only in a place to where only you can respond to you, um, eventually all of your psychoses and all of your craziness and all of your issues will start to take on a personality. Um, and that thing will start to live on you uh, because you've been by yourself. You've been isolated and you've been bound, which means uh, being bound, I can't get to a place um, of restoration um, um, because everybody keeps me away and bound so I can't get to the help. And so whenever I meet someone, um, what seems like I'm going off is actually my cry for help. Uh, can you please unchain me? Can you please set me free? Can you please help me to get back to who I know I am? Uh, because what you are hearing and what you are seeing is a representation of being put away and bound. I'm trying not to preach this, 
but it's creeping up on me, and I'm trying to stay in, you know, the blog, the blog mindset. Ah, but um, um, what you're needing is the representation of what I've been going through. Uh, I'm sorry, um, forgive me, uh, but I learned how to deal like this. Um, I learned how to survive like this because um, I've been amongst dead things, and anything dead can't respond to me. Anything dead can't give me any stimulus. It can't give me anything to cause me to reevaluate what I'm going through. So when I cry out, in the dead place, huh, all I have is my voice uh, because I'm in a dead place and I'm bowed. And some of us are in that place today. Uh, we, we're we crying out from a dead place and we're tired. We're sick of it. But in the text, we find this man who was just like some of us had been in a dead place, been cast away because of issues, and people meet our issues instead of us. And when this man who they called a lunatic comes in contact with Jesus, the Bible declares, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, watch this, watch this, that the man ran and bowed before Jesus and worship him. But wait a minute, the text says that he was vexed with a spirit. Ah, But yet the man um, ran and worshiped Jesus. Uh, But the man was yet vexed and demon possessed. But yet the man went and worshiped Jesus. Uh, Can I get you to think for a moment, uh, was it the man that was bowing, or was it the spirit that was was in him? Um, uh, watch this. Uh, was it the spirit that recognized the Son of God? Mm-hmm. Was it the man bowing, or was it this demon inside of the man? who recognized that this is the Son of God. Uh The Bible says that he ran and he worshipped him, and he began to have a dialogue with him. Uh And then uh, in the dialogue, the man says, uh, well, the voice in the man, the voice coming out of the man says, why are you here? Why did you come to torment me? Uh, Your time has not come, which lets me know that this wasn't the man talking, uh, because when you researched the man, he was a young man. He would not have been old enough to know um, the lineage of this Jesus. Uh, But the spirit in him, uh, 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 that, that demonic spirit in him, um, um, who, we, who we're going to be introduced to in about five seconds, began to speak um, because Jesus asked one question, who are you? And the demon spoke out and said, we are legion. Our name is legion. Yeah, because (laughs) it's a whole lot of us up in here. Uh, But then that same spirit began uh, to talk to Jesus and said, why have you come to torment me? What, what, what? Why are you here? Um, And he began to negotiate with Jesus. Why would the spirit negotiate with Jesus uh, if he didn't know who Jesus was. You're you going to catch it. Um, uh, uh, the same spirit that was crying out for help um, recognized when the Son of God came on the scene. And that spirit recognized the power uh, of Jesus Christ. And the spirit said, listen, don't do away with me. Uh, but do you see those pigs over there? Uh, 
I know I've got to come out of him. Uh, I know I've got to leave him. I know I've got to take myself and all of my other imps. I know we've got to go because you're not going to let me stay in him. Uh, my time in him is up. Um, I'm no longer going to be able to speak through him um, or speak for him. I know my time is up. Uh, but if you would, uh, 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 just send me and send us into those pigs. And the Bible declares that Jesus cast out the demons and the demons entered into the pigs. The Bible called them swine. And the Bible said that the swine jumped into the river and drowned themselves. Uh, suddenly, suddenly, uh, the voice that was speaking was no longer there. But watch this. You're going to catch this because uh, this is going to be uh, 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 the basis for going forward with our blogs of restored life. Um, uh, uh, the voice that was doing all the talking and the voice that was that was that everyone was used to, um, even though they were blaming it on the man, mm-hmm, um, uh, they 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 come to find out that that it wasn't actually the man, it was the thing that was on him. It was the spirit that was dwelling on him. Uh It had overtaken him. Um, And and, and some of us, I'm saying, uh, some of us um, are in a place to where we're functioning, um, but there is another voice that speaks for us. You know that anger that you have. Mm -hmm. That's not you. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. You, you're bitter. That's 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 not you. That's no. That's not you. Nope. That's not you. Um, uh, you've been wounded and you've been scarred, and that pain has begun to take on a life in and on you. Uh, but yet, it's not you. Uh, but what happens is uh, that thing becomes in the forefront. Um, and if you're not careful, you'll start looking for sympathy. Oh, God. Uh, you start looking for sympathy over your issues. You start looking for sympathy over what you may have gone through. And so you start uh, presenting the hurt uh, so that someone will at least acknowledge that you've been hurt uh, is the same thing as the spirit crying out. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so all of a sudden, all of a sudden now that 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 second voice is gone, and, and and now the Bible says that after his encounter with Jesus, the Bible allows us to go on a journey. It says. Next time we see this man, he's sitting down eating with Jesus, and he's clothed, not clothed, but clothed. He has, he's fully dressed, and he's in his right mind, yeah. Uh, he's been restored. Uh, he, his, his life, uh, before whatever happened to him, that opened up the door uh, for this other spirit to dwell in and on him. And that spirit began to talk. Whatever happened that caused the man to go into the background, uh, and this spirit uh, began to take over his body um, and, and begin to speak and act out so much to so the People were actually dealing with the man uh, uh, the way that they should have been dealing with the spirit that was in the man. Um, um, because uh, I wish I had time to really deal with that. Um, because there are some people that have mishandled you. Uh, and they've mishandled you because they thought it was you. Uh, 
Um, but the reality is uh, they were mishandling you because they did not want to deal with what you were going through. And so they said they pushed you to the side. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you tonight that God has a word that can bring you back to your restored life. Yep. Uh, to the way you were before the tragedy happened, before your life was changed and turned upside down. God has a way of bringing you back to a restored life. Who's speaking for you? Is it your past hurt? Is it your past situations? When when, when people meet you, are they meeting you? Or are they meeting your situations? Is your spouse married to you sometimes, and then sometimes they're married to your past because you react to your now spouse based on what your thin girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife, how they treated you, this one is getting a visitation from someone for whom they don't even know. But yet they're sleeping in the bed with you. They said, I do to you. But every now and then, you allow that hurt to come up. God is saying, that's not your best life. He wants you restored. Yeah, he wants you to be restored. He wants you to be restored. Who's speaking for you? Who's who's who are they meeting? Who are they meeting? I, I really wish I had time to preach this teach it. Who who's 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 speaking for you? I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, has anyone called? Um, do we have anyone on the line? If you're on the line, just say hello. Tell us what your name is and tell us where you're calling from. Hey, Gary. It's Regina calling from Macon, Georgia. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. What's up, Gina? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks, sis. Thank you so much for calling. What's up? Nothing. I was just calling. I wanted to, you know, listen to hear, see what you were talking about. You know, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> You're getting uh, old. You're getting old. I, yeah, I'm getting old. So I said, Let me, we, we've been friends for over 20 years now. Over 20 years? Yes. You are getting old. Yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're both getting old. No, ma'am. I said, no, let ma'am. me give you a call. <laughs> Thank you. Check you Thank out. Thank you so much. See how's it going? And that's it. I appreciate you, sis. You have been um, a part of my life for, like you said, over twenty years, and mm-hmm. um, um, I really do appreciate you. Thank you for taking the journey with us. Pass the word on. Share, share the word um, about us on on Friday nights. Um, even if you can't come, which 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 you better come. But I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Pass the word along and let them know that there that there is something great happening over here. Um, and we're going to be dealing with some real stuff. I know you're in the medical field. Yeah. Right. I think, yeah. Um, so we're going to have some, some medical things, and um, we're going to do this thing together, and we're going to deal with some real issues. So I appreciate you. Thank you for calling, and um, just thank you for your friendship um, and, your, and your support. All right. No problem, no problem. All right, great. Love you, girl. Peace out. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye. All right, who else we have on the line? Who else we have on the line? Who else we have on the line? Anybody else? 
anybody else. Cool, 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 cool. Who's speaking for you? Tonight you can have a restored life. You do not have to live your life um, based on what you've been going through. God wants you restored. He knows you've been going through stuff. Um, He knows these things have hurt you. It happens. But you don't have to live in a dead place. And that's what we're going to be focusing on with the restored life. We're going to deal with the dead places. Um, And we're going to work to pull you out of the dead place into a place of life um, so that you can be, life can be spoken into you. And you can really live your best life. I am G. M. Prim. I appreciate you for hanging out with us. Um, is there somebody else on the line? It's me. Ah, my son. <laughs> my son. My son. My The youngest of our three children. What's going on, man? Nothing much. I just, I'm actually in the next room over just listening to the that's, podcast. That's so and funny. I just, I just wanted to say that, um, that I'm proud of you, Dad. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. No problem. Thanks. That 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 means a lot coming from you guys. I appreciate you. And um, tell tell all your friends, man. Tell all your friends. Will do. All right. Excellent. Wow. Wow. That's my namesake. That's my namesake. That's my namesake. Eighteen years old. Works two jobs. Out of high school. Get ready to go to college. Um, God has been faithful to Dana and I. Well, again. This is your friend, your brother. Um, This is GM Prim. Uh, And just in case you didn't know, I'm the senior pastor of the Oasis of Restoration Family Worship Center in beautiful eastern Long Island. If you desire us to come um, to sing or to speak at your next event, um, inbox us on Facebook, Gary M. Prim, or email us at Gary. G A R Y underscore prim P R I M M G A R Y underscore P R I P as in Paul R I M M at Yahoo dot com Gary underscore prim Yahoo dot um, dot com and put in your ministry request um, and someone from our team will reach out to you and we would love to come and share um, a word um, in a more formal setting. Um, I love preaching the gospel. Um, I love sharing the word. I love teaching music. Um, And and so call us. We would love to come. Again, this is Restored Life. Join us next Friday, 10 p.m. When you see the flyers on social media, help us to promote it. This is our show, our platform. We are restoring lives back to the way God planned it. You are. And I am a world changer. I'm Pastor GM Prim. I'll see you next week. Same time, same station. Be restored. Peace. <laughs>